downstairs and upstairs from Alexander Usyk. Alexander Usyk flowing as free, freely as Mercury. Alexander Usyk is on track to becoming one of the greatest pugilists to ever grace the boxing ring. Back in 2012, he won gold at the Olympics in London. The transition to the pro ranks led him to the undisputed cruiserweight championship. Now making strides at heavyweight, Usyk is just one belt short of claiming the ultimate crown in the royal division. It's time to recall the pivotal moments of the boxing Game of Thrones that brought the Ukrainian Joker to the pinnacle of fisticuffs. Usyk's pro debut in 2013 marked the beginning of an undefeated streak that remains unbroken a decade later. The Southpaw technician's first nine wins came by way of KO, earning him a top spot in the short list of WBO contenders. Only in Oleksandr's 10th bout, the unbeaten cruiserweight title holder, Krzysztof Glavatsky, refused to go away easily. Of cruiserweights. Nonetheless, performing on enemy territory in September 2016, Usyk effortlessly kept the pole at bay with his jab, tagging him with a right hook, and landing clean left hands. Up close, as you can see here, and Krzysztof Glavatsky is the world champion. Over the course of 12 playful rounds, the Ukrainian was in total control of the match. Crowd on their feet, willing their man, Gravotsky on to retain his title, terrific. In the final seconds, he openly toyed with the soon-to-be former WBO kingpin. Failing down the strip, he's very, very fit, but the heart of the champion here in Gravotsky, he's at his spots in this round, he's really... Capturing the strap in just 10 performances, Usyk surpassed Evander Holyfield's record and began preparations for his first defense in his debut on U.S. soil. In the opposite corner stood regional champ Tabiso Mchunu with a record of 17 and 2. Standing dominant international amateur. The Rock made up for the size disadvantage by detonating dynamite. Dominate this division. And then he does. Alexander kept the left idle, diversifying his lead hand attack instead. Field with Levi Phillips. The left hand this round. In the second lap, he incorporated a right hook. First of all, just as I was, I was the champion. The South African responded with a couple of snappy jabs and launched a combo at the end. Usyk's footwork accelerated, and so did his output. By adding the right hook, he prevented the opponent from setting up power shots. European head yeah, from South Africa. Usually we see guys watch come the head, to watch behind the head. from South Africa. As they approached the midpoint, the rock started winding up. Left hand, as you saw him do over the top there. Yes, just then a really good left hand. The champion employed his patented style, blasting from different angles and shifting into automatic fire mode. He's beating a lot of guys. He's going to be dead serious. He's going to like that. He's going to run on top of him now. Displaying calculated aggression. You know, these are the rounds where the class generally starts to tell the middle of the fight. Superior ring IQ. Shooter's a good fighter. And impeccable timing. Good shot by Usyk. Terrific. Alexander unleashed a storm in the sixth round that forced the challenger to take a breather. No, not at all. That's good too, Max. Yeah. Umchunu was still in the fight, despite needing another pause following a sharp uppercut. He closed the round with an exchange in the pocket. Good right hook. Down of the fight in this round. Now Usyk took a break, aiming to entertain the audience. Something to watch. <laughs> Here's something playful. Mchunu did his best to hinder the Ukrainian showboating. Punches and punches once again. Here's a couple of quick counter shots. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> this was my moment to put on a show. <laughs> and you hit me. A dangerous game finally commenced in the ninth. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than that. And Usyk, the Capricorn in this fight. Down, down. 
The challenger was no pushover, but that night he simply didn't stand a chance. Best fighting of the fight in the last 20 or 30 seconds. Oh, and they're going down for the second time, and there's the third knockdown. Okay. And now, the Moretta is going to stop the fight. Okay. The bout ended in crushing defeat for The Rock. The referee noticed the lack of resistance and called no mas. Got caught with that left hand right there, and that cut his eye. 2017 was a turning point in Usyk's career. At 12-0, Alexander met the announcement of the World Boxing Super Series. This elite eight-man tournament gathered the best of the best with the goal of having the winner collect all the major belts and elevate the division's prestige among fans. Victory came with the Muhammad Ali Trophy. In the quarterfinals, the favorite faced the vastly experienced Marco Hook, notorious for his heavy punch and bad temper. Boasting a 40-4 resume, including 27 knockouts, the Bosnian-German fighter had held the WBO gold for six years. Captain Hook's explosive personality showed in the lead-up. Alexander saved his energy for the ring. Marco's antics were just as dirty inside the ropes. He would shamelessly grab the head and deliver illegal blows. But it's a two-favorite tap. Christoph Radici on the floor. This is Christoph. Exploiting the referee's leniency, Hook targeted the kidneys. Struck to the back of the head. And held the gloves. But the reminders constant. But soon the Ukrainian sharpshooter loosened up. He danced around the perimeter, easily evading the opponent's bombardments. What these boxes. The jabs were catching the foe coming in. Remember Robert Bird said that anything on the waistband is a round of applause from his vocal support here. Usyk misleadingly hit the Bosnian's gloves. In order to sting him with rapier-like strikes to different levels. You're on the midpoint. Hiding behind a high guard, Captain Hook was vulnerable for a cross to the midsection off a double jab. Pound for pound list, the mythical pound for pound list. Having lost patience, he exploded. That counter right hand wasn't too far away from Hook, and he comes forward. But had to retreat after the failed attempt, and Alexander switched to an aggressive puncher mode with flurries. Gets his boxing stance beneath him, and with a single phase attack, but short to the mark, and now beginning to bring up across through the middle. Hook made uncomfortable. Unable to crush the rival in one swift assault, in the fourth round, Usyk reverted to his long-range jab and consistently delivered to the head and body. Connie Mittermeier on Marco Hook's corner, all fair in love and war, of course. Hook rallied and snuck in a few shots from a distance. Lead left hook wasn't too far away from him. That shot got his attention, but he's back in the space of the ring now. The champion adjusted and countered with an uppercut to the abdomen. Once again, it has plenty of pop on it, does that punch. Following up with a cannonade to the dome. Downstairs and upstairs from Alexander Usyk. What a left hand, what a combination. And Usyk hook backing away, Usyk. All game, Alexander punished the adversary for connections. Off the road now, Usyk. Good right hand lands from Hook, and the showboating in evidence from Alexander Usyk. Saying, yeah. Captain Hook's sloppy double leg marked the watershed in the fifth. The shot's coming his way, and then last... Usyk was in flow state, stalking the seasoned veteran. Usyk gets onto the front foot, Hook bobbing and weaving, but he can't evade. Did the same shot once again, but now here comes Alexander Usyk, unloading heavy leather. Hook covering up, trying to fire back with the right hand, but he's on the significant... In the eighth, Alexander repeated the pull counter sequence. Use a lot of punches coming from Alexander Usyk. Left hand success! And, then and Marco once again broke the rules, seeking a necessary breather. Through sheer determination, he withstood Usyk's relentless onslaught in the later rounds. Sensing that Marco Hook is vulnerable position, but it appears to me as he's put under pressure from some accurate punch picking to fight his way off the ropes. But the subsequent shelling marked the beginning of the end. From the ropes on the far side of the ring, near Usyk's corner. Furious assault being launched by Alexander Usyk. There was no escape from the Ukrainian machine gun, and even the permissive ref had had enough. Look at Marco Hook. All of his strength being put to the test. Usyk working away furiously. Shots underneath. Robert Bird has stepped in and has waved it off. 
Hook proved to be a tough nut to crack, enduring Oleksandr's storm for 30 minutes. Stubbornly refusing to go down, he allowed Usyk to issue a beating on his home turf and defend the WBO title. Soon Usyk performed on enemy territory once again. In the tournament semi-final, Oleksandr locked horns with Myris Bridis, an undefeated Latvian knockout artist holding the WBC throne. At the outset, the Punisher displayed adept tactical preparation. He maintained a dominant outside foot position in mirrored stance and focused on landing the right cross against the southpaw. Will he be inspired by that? He's stepping on the left leg, on the left foot of Usyk. Usyk in the early going, Briadis matched Usyk without much problem, fighting him toe to toe. Feeling that they have the fight won. He even smashed the torso off of a slip, Usyk's own trademark move. Good right hand to the body, Usyk tries to respond with the south. After a clash of heads in the third, Hook around the corner, the heads came together there. And getting rattled with a hook, Alexander managed to sneak in a well-timed left. To cruiserweight prospects, Mikel Lewal. Myris had no Kevlar around the waist and got winded from multiple body blows. Good right Sundays was the only day of rest as Usyk gets through the good right jab then top. The fierce battle in the championship rounds fully justified the event's association with Muhammad Ali's name. Two occasions in the team in this final round. The final minute. Good right hand from Briadis and another shot from the right arena. And still, both men punching right up until the final bell. What a fantastic contest we have just... By the end of this incredibly close bout, a hard-fought decision and the WBC gold went to Usyk. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a clamor for a rematch. The grand finale took place in July 2018 in Moscow. In the opposite corner stood the 24-year-old Murat Gassiev. The undefeated Russian with 19 KOs and 26 victories was touted as the second favorite to win the tournament, and he lived up to that reputation, crushing Vladarchik. No questions. Gassiev with an uppercut. And Dortikos. Search of Dortikos once again. Oh my goodness! Besides Usyk's belts. WBA, IBF, and the Ring magazine straps were also on the line. These titles were contested between the division's top technician and best puncher. Nonetheless, the Ukrainian mongoose, who deftly maneuvered around the squared circle and made Gassiev overextend on power shots, showcased the superiority of his approach. But there were other terrific boxes. By controlling the range with a dynamic right hand and feints, Usyk masterfully evaded the hooks and counter. Gassiev was trying to parry it with his lead left hand to the body beneath Usyk's right elbow. Beautiful. Murat desperately lacked combination work. 14 and a half time. Only single bombs to the stomach would land and disrupt Oleksandr's activity for a moment. Counts left, a joy to watch. Gassiev again, constant movement laterally. Meanwhile, Usyk's jab looked excellent. What a winner tonight, irrespective of what the three scoring judges decided. Light and fast bursts to all levels earned him points and bewildered the adversary. It can be hard nice work for anybody. Speaking with his trainer Abel Sanchez during the week here in Moscow. Morat pursued barely cutting angles. And like his training partner. And again, making Gassiev miss rather... Allowing Usyk to put things together and fire from afar. Beautiful left hand and then a right up... ...hand from Gassiev and then he digs one downstairs to the body, but look at the... Gassiev was far from done, and in the fourth round, lightning struck in the ring. ...strong as, as the fight wears on. Oh, Beautiful right hand. right hand from Gassiev and he falls up with another... Murat even things out for a moment. ...flowing and fluid. Here in round six, he can blink and remain concentrated on his work and counter with to close the distance against the perpetual motion of Alexander Usyk. Outboxing like prior to that big hand the moment. But then his strategy fell apart completely. Saying audibly, I would rather see you. Part of those changes in his corner team. Body effectively once more. Usyk intimating that is to keep the punches up. Being picked off. Alexander Usyk flowing as free, freely as Mercury. Deep into this 12th and final round, the 10 seconds, Alexander Usyk gets on his bike as the bell sounds to conclude the 12th and final.
By the end of the night, the 31-year-old Usyk had outstruck Gassiev 3-1 and secured a dominant decision win. The Muhammad Ali Trophy and undisputed cruiserweight championship laurels belonged to Oleksandr. He became the first man in 12 years to collect all the belts. Usyk all smiled up in the boxing ring. While being interviewed after the Gassiev showdown, Usyk called out the Brit Tony Bellew. I heard Tony Bellew wants the winner of this tournament. Hey, my dear friend. I'm ready. Boasting a resume of 30 wins and two losses, Bellew had previously held the WBC crown, but moved up to heavyweight and had knocked out the well acclaimed David Hay twice. Push off the back foot, it's hard to do that. Oh. For the 35-year-old Bellew, the bout with Usyk marked a farewell to the sport on a high note. He had promised his wife to only leave boxing with a belt, and feared her anger much more than the Ukrainian strength. The contest took place at cruiserweight, and all the major titles were on the line. Alexander started cautiously and initially struggled to pick up the British bomber's timing. Super Series. Meanwhile, Bellew stayed composed and didn't overextend. It's so busy. Doesn't mean you always lose against them, but it's hard to get the sparring. He evaded the jab and uncorked a resounding right. The body and landing, also with the right. Kusik unbeaten, but he's land some shots. So Bellew will be waiting with that right. A series of body blows clearly bothered the champion. He's giving a really good opportunity here as he tries. And Tony added the left to the menu. It's so busy. With his work, doesn't really look for power use. Next, the Brit began mixing targets with hooks. In the Ukraine and the realm. Good shot from the Usyk, unsure. He's not confident. In the second stretch, Bellew's tactics proved effective, boosting his confidence. Will fall into the, the, to the body and land in. Also with a right hand there. This is good work from Tony Bellew early on. It's an excellent start. And he, wants he would throw in bunches and connect. Let him get set. And when they get it close, in committing with anything. And there's Tony Usyk's jab lacked volume and consistency. Momentum and as Usyk backs him up. Tony kept winning episodes one after another. Well, Tony Bellew knew that he landed that one in the fourth. Well, nice right hand is well. Only approaching the midpoint did Alexander find the groove and adapt to the opponent's style. Feel the pace as it goes on then. It's bad news. Some good from Tony Bellew. Usyk floored in the amateurs. First round, a bit of a standoff, but Oh, oh, big left hand. Bellew committed to powerful lunges from a distance. Far more free Alexander Usyk. However, the counters weren't as sharp anymore. Bellew just overreaching it a lot. You know, the thrill of the battle, but job land. Still the right hands from Bellew. This is very close. I've got Bellew ahead because round two, three, and four was good, but good right. Halfway through the match, Usyk's left hook started to connect. A machine, so many calling him Usyk. And Usyk looks comfortable. Good oh. shot! Meticulously chipping away at the midsection, Alexander finally felt the tables turning. Bellew's had a fantastic snap as a hooking position, like that. That's how he hurt Bellew in the last round, and he started to throw it differently. But there he is he looks a bloodthirsty grin appeared on his face. Left hand working a treat. Late into the seventh, Bellew had depleted the remaining reserves. Wait, as we saw against David, and now he's going for it. Tries to turn it. To... Yeah, I, I, I give that round to Usyk. I think he can. That's when Usyk gained momentum. Looking brighter for the Ukrainian, much brighter. And soon rocked the Brit. To send the blood splatter in. Yeah, big left hands from Alexander Usyk in trouble for Bellew. Here in the... Backing up to the ropes, the challenger felt the champion's true might. For well, Usyk. He's really closing this gap with, with real, you know, minimum oh, effort. Good shot. And that team lights out to the ring. I think he's going to stop it. And Alexander. He, he took his foot off the pace. And, you know, U6 seemed to grow in Groggy from exhaustion, Bellew stopped moving. Alexander took aim and sent Tony crashing down with a lethal hook. Trying to get up, he realized there was a big drama show waiting at home. A couple of times before, with real, you know, minimum effort. Having crushed Bellew, Usyk entertained the idea of moving up to heavyweight. Cruiserweight accolades granted him the right to go up against the belt holder straight away. Yet bureaucratic hurdles put the title shot on hold and allowed the Ukrainian to settle into the new division with a bout versus Chaz Witherspoon. Okay, I'm punching Witherspoon, but 
Yeah, I agree with you, BK. It's not the heavyweight. But we expect it. We expect the more power to try to hurt Witherspoon here. Now the Seminole wins. Sometimes content just to win, but that hurt Witherspoon. And he goes back into the corner. No. Yeah, no, that's it. In October 2020, Usyk faced a dangerous foe in Derek Chisora. Winning against him would guarantee a championship fight. The renowned British bruiser had scored 23 knockouts and had a total record of 32-9. and Derek outweighed Oleksandr by 38 pounds and had spent the last decade in the sports elite. Usyk felt the natural heavyweight power early on. His answer was sidestepping, slipping and making the bigger man miss. The left hand proved useful for halting Chisora's bursts of offense. Derek. Meanwhile, Derek pursued him maniac style. He tried to throw and tie up the mobile enemy in the clinch. Swinging all the way from yesterday, the British powerhouse delivered meaningful blows. Everything changed in the fourth. Usyk settled in and began finding the mark more often, thanks to superior footwork. Chisora was dropping nukes exclusively. Yet excess muscle mass played against him, and as the fight progressed, he started to tire out. The further off Derek's strikes were, the more Usyk turned up his volume. The varied use of the left combined with the right hook banked him the eighth round. Now Usyk was hunting an exhausted beast. By the later portions, the momentum had swung entirely in Oleksandr's favor. Chisora would detonate here and there, but most of it was hitting the block. Gone with the adrenaline wind, Chisora lost the ending of the showdown completely. As the bout came to a close, all three judges sided with Usyk, declaring him the winner. The Ukrainian captured the WBO Intercontinental Belt, bagged a jackpot of $2.5 million, and became the mandatory contender. Объявление победителям. Поздравляем Александра Усика с этим успехом. The collision with Anthony Joshua was scheduled for September 2021. The unified champion held three out of four major titles, and much like Usyk, had won the 2012 Olympics, but in the super heavyweight division. With 22 knockouts and 24 professional victories, the British Goliath was considered the favorite. Third knockdown of the fight for Anthony Joshua, right hand! He had only suffered a single defeat, which was later avenged, and had previously retired Vladimir Klitschko. The clash of the two Olympians in London was held in a stadium, and 66,000 tickets were sold out in no time. At the press conference, the Ukrainian dressed up as the Joker. Anthony, however, didn't realize he was in for a killing joke. In the ring, Usyk appeared as a boxing professor, teaching the six-foot-six-inch student. The feints and head movements troubled Joshua from the get-go. He was forced to constantly extend his lead hand to control the distance. 
Alexander took note and enacted punishment, blasting the left. A sucker for the cross, Anthony struggled to figure out the challenger's approach. He's taken here tonight. Of course. It's a straight left right to Alexander Usyk. Putting yeah. in the performance in a lifetime. I told you. It's back on the legs. I told you. It's back the legs. The champ is in real trouble. When it finally dawned on him, Joshua began throwing straights and right hooks, mirroring the opponent's tactics. Usyk ate a few meaningful strikes coming in. For you in the champion's favor. Oh, he caught it coming in. Counter right hook from AJ straight right. The ultimate thinker in Usyk in that. Alexander's jab saved the day. His lead fist was faster than Joshua's power shots and became the decisive factor. See how Joshua moved his feet back then? Three rounds for Usyk, one for AJ. Oh boy, there's your answer from Usyk and a jab backs Joshua up again. He effectively manipulated and deflected the champion's once dangerous left hand. I think he came out his uh, back touching the ropes. At times, he would mock Joshua by slipping the jab with ease. A little right uppercut there from Usyk. Pounds and pounds, and even Joshua's got blood out coming out of his nose. Counters over the top were also present. The hold is for 12 rounds. The Ukrainian punished the midsection and didn't give the muscle-bound heavyweight room to breathe. AJ, yes. to let that... well, he just can't get comfortable because... AJ, good backhand to Joshua. He's learning on the job. Oh, oh. Additionally, Anthony had to worry about Usyk's long-range cross. Oh, and again, Usyk with a straight. So Alexander started taking the outside foot to jab. This trick made Joshua anticipate a non-existent cross, and the challenger caught him off guard. It was all science still. <laughs> he does a good jab, hot shot in there, Usyk. Good jab. Furthermore, Usyk's circular movement to the right forced the champion to reset constantly. That's going to be very difficult. Right to close the Joshua, and there's Usyk again with his own left. Anthony tried to slow down the rival by targeting the torso. Is that straight right hand from Joshua? So he's forcing the action to move, to move around. Most of them fell short. Right there, you got to move your feet back. You can't just move your head. The mind game continued all the way to the championship rounds. Towards the end, Alexander picked up the pace and began putting together dynamic combinations. Joshua's only hope was a KO, but he was desperately out of resources. Of course, the, the football won't allow him to throw much. No. Good action here. Anthony's reaction to getting hit was worrisome. And there's Usyk. Oh, double. And again. I think AJ's hurt. And again. AJ could be. Sensing blood in the closing seconds, Usyk launched a ferocious assault, striving to secure the finish. AJ, AJ is in the ropes. Do you oh. believe this? Yes, I believe it. Only the bell saved the local star. Usyk displayed a grandmaster level of boxing. He technically outclassed the Olympic gold medalist and a three-belt unified champ. Alexander went home as the nearly undisputed king with a $20 million bag. This man has to be, if not the, one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world, considering what he just did. Absolutely. The sequel took place a year later, and there were six titles at stake, including the on-and-off retired Tyson Fury's linear championship status. The bout was held on neutral territory in Saudi Arabia. Joshua did his homework for the rematch. In the opening rounds, he immediately started firing to the breadbasket, both on the front foot, the holdover, and as a primary countermeasure. It's of an excellent round for Joshua. Meanwhile, Usyk was landing the left with usual consistency. They're also a little bit different in this fight. You mentioned Joshua now looking for a big upper. And fencing with a stinging up jab. There's that up jab. Jab lands from oh. Usyk a moment ago. There's that up jab. Anthony also utilized the lead hand to the fullest. Working. That lead hand is all like Joshua after tasting his power up the, uh, the punch output. And tried to ring Usyk's bell with a cross, Ooh. alternating it with a hook. Diverschenko or Terence Crawford, they collect data in the early mm. rounds. Of the Having figured out the challenger's timing, the champion diversified his target selection. Had success in the early part of this fight, but the real estate this fight is taking place in it's almost identical to where it took place in the first fight, right near the middle of the ring. The straight left was not forgotten either. 
Hard left hand down the middle from... By the middle portions, the one-man Hurricane established dominance. To let it go a little. Nation of his own. A right hand connects. So oh. does a left hand. And connected on the counter with increasing frequency. Oh. You now you can hear the... Cold. The Brit's patience was running out. Your chance for both fighters here in Saudi Arabia both and his aim faltered on a couple of occasions you're starting to see shades of it oh. right now but there's a body shot did that one stray low yeah that was below the belt yes, line yes it did <laughs> even when he's not trying still Anthony's body work paid dividends and he wasn't going to abandon it staying invisible he stays outside that lead leg beautiful to shrink Usyk down at the same time the Ukrainian continued to penetrate the armor at will Snaps the head oh. back of Joshua and another one and another. That was a sneaky. Only in the eighth Body round did Joshua start to catch up. Music is you can never build on anything. Beautiful right uppercut to the body. Oh, and again. Back downstairs and a three-punch combo. Usyk instantly responded with trademark combinations. Usyk, but a slapping right hand there from Joshua as well. Proving difficult once again for Anthony. Ooh. Uppercut on the inside from Usyk, but body shots from Joshua. The best action. But by the ninth, the challenger found true confidence in his attack. Alluding to last round. Shot to the body from. He summoned the strength within to turn it up. Slow Usyk down in the pit. Joshua again to the body. Now making it rough on the. And delivered his best stretch so far. He is on the run right now. Then the Joker felt a sense of urgency and rushed to get revenge. Oh, oh, big left hand connects from Usyk. Usyk firing back. Usyk began to sit on punches. It's Usyk. One straight right hand. Ramped up the output. Or any typical one punch knockout puncher. How he hurts you, oh. how he gets knockout. And wobbled the foe. It was hurt at the end. Another right taking all that damage. From oh. Usyk. Punches. In the championship rounds, Alexander got back to his precise and vicious tango flow. Here in the 11th. Oh. It's a really, really impressive. Anthony fight. held strong. A left hand downstairs, oh. but Joshua beats him with a right hand. That shot rocked him. Bursting with offense oh. here and there. Big left hook from Joshua. Well, a moment ago, he's going to need oh. more of those. He's going to need shots like that one. And yet, Usyk outboxed oh, him even on the back foot. Joshua, he was a warrior, and he's acting like one right here. He wants to put an extra. Joshua, a deep breath from Usyk as well. Oh. But a fantastic. And a little. Playful left uppercut. A lot of respect. By the end of 36 thrilling minutes, Usyk outlanded Joshua 170 to 124, hitting him more than any previous opponent. It's difficult to fathom that Alexander was awarded only a split decision. Furthermore, it was not the Ukrainian, but the Brit who grew antsy, tossing away the belts and storming out of the ring. He then came back and delivered a bizarre monologue. You're very strong guy, listen. You're very strong. I don't care about strong, I have that skill. You're stronger than Wim Okay. Skilled Wim Boxing. Yeah, okay. Come You're not strong, how did you beat me? Let's, let's do this. How? Let's do this. Skill. Let's do this. I had character. Okay. Okay. Let's do determination. Eventually, Joshua gave Maybe credit to the champion. That. But it shows the levels of hard work he must have put in. So please, give him a round of applause as our heavyweight champion of the world. Woo! Usyk, on the other hand, expressed his desire to fight the Gypsy King. Having defeated Joshua, Usyk became the third person in history to unify the titles of the two heaviest weight classes in boxing. However, to conquer the royal division completely, he has to convince the last reigning king, Tyson Fury, to meet him in the squared circle. Alexander Usyk has already made a name for himself, but there is still a mountain to climb. Defeated cruiserweight prospects Mikel Lawal. Seth, downstairs and upstairs from Alexander Usyk. Alexander Usyk flowing as free, freely as Mercury. Oh, 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 AJ, AJ is a if you enjoyed the video, one to the like button, subscribe to the channel, and vote for sport. With, with real